You're listening to the Broadway Podcast Network. Without further ado, the Dear Friends Podcast. Dear friends, spill your woes to your musical family. Dear friends, they will take your questions and turn them into nuggets of wisdom. And anecdotes in an otherwise cynical world. Dear friends... Hi, I'm dear friend Emily. I'm dearer friend Christy. And I'm dearest friend Jess. And welcome to Dear Friend, a write and advice podcast for the musical minded. How are we doing today, my dear friend? Not too bad. I'm doing just lovely today. Mm-hmm. Feeling good. Lo- Feeling yeah. good. Well, we have a write and advice question for our write and advice podcast. <laughs> what are the odds? Imagine that. And this is, this is from Harold Pinter. And they ask Dear friends, I know you guys listed your favorite Sondheim musicals, but what are your favorite Andrew Lloyd Webber musicals? Also, fun fact, did you know that they share a birth date? LOL. Uh, <laughs> well, isn't that a great question? And I've <laughs> never heard that fun fact of trivia before. This never, year. Never. 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 Um, <laughs> Andrew Lloyd Webber, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I feel like it's a yeah, good time Child of the 80s, I'm them. kind of in my wheelhouse here, so. <laughs> uh, and this is our 20th episode. We got to yeah. do something special. Well, um, I, I, I have a list, although I got to say, it was a little tricky for me because <laughs> Andrew Lloyd Webber is just profoundly not my guy. <laughs> um, there's just a lot of his stuff that I don't, I either don't like <laughs> or I don't know. But I managed to cull together, I think, the ones I do like. So I, I, I okay. have no idea how it's going to compare to you guys. This is yeah, a purely same. subjective list, by the way, everyone. You can like yeah, Angela yeah. Weber. This is a me problem, not a you problem. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say I find the man himself more interesting than anything he's ever written. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just want him to write a bridge someday. <laughs> he writes bridges. I'm making a joke. He just yes. a lot of a lot of verse chorus, verse chorus, verse. Chorus, I want him to decide. Chorus. I want him to decide between whether he's going to be a dorky but a dorky but cute old man or just an absolute awful person. So I feel like most old men ride that line pretty well. Yeah, especially when you're one of like the richest people in your country. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he owns a literal castle. I think I said that a bunch of times in my Angel and Webber video. He's a yeah, see, man. <laughs> he's an he's an actual freaking baron, so yeah. But you know what? The man is an evil genius because he knows how to write a good hook, and he will write at least one good hook per show. Yeah, I would say that he's a b- brilliant businessman because like he owns all of his musicals outright, mm-hmm. like he's his own producer. Yeah. Um. So every one of them, he makes all the money for. It's not going yeah. to like yeah. Uh, and you know, McEnroe honestly, you know, my generation, that's what we grew up with. So you know, you're talking yeah. about when I was falling in love with a musical. This is you know a lot of the meat of it. So, and you know, even looking back at it and saying, yeah, some of that wasn't so great. It's like you know, it's still it's still in the heart. So yeah. Yeah, for well, sure. Well, how about we count it down? All right. Um, I'll start with my number five because I'm a hundred percent sure it's not going to be on any of your guys' lists. Uh-huh. Um, and we're going our top five. Um, but my number five is Cinderella. Yes, the ball sack Cinderella <laughs> made it to the list. <laughs> I mean, I'll take your word for it. I don't really know anything about it. Yeah, um, it's it's got a few other nice than that. That it's, homage to what is that song? To in my, my own, own little, little, corner. little corner. It's got yeah. a few nice yeah. songs in it. Um, you know, it's but the the feminist the feminist Cinderella thing. It's been done and done better. So I I will say that I do kind of like Emerald Fennell's book to it. Like that's kind of where I think a lot of the the, the pop sizzle. Like if you go back to our musicals with cheese episode that we did, I think I'm a little too hard on it because there's a lot of stuff in it that I find interesting. Like. The fairy godmother is a plastic I think surgeon. That, that's that, like... kind of yeah, <laughs> kind of doing that and kind of doing a darker take on it. That's not not a half a half bad idea. So, and then like the the missing prince turned out to run away because he wants to be with his gay lover. <laughs> a lot of stuff like that. I'm like, yeah. okay. You're like, well, you're, at you're least trying something new. Yeah, it's like, I can it's, honestly yeah, say I haven't seen that made. in a Cinderella adaptation. On the yeah. other hand, you know, we have the queen extolling her hus- her um, you know, supposedly dead son's you know masculinity, and it's like. You're his mom, you. Mm, well, that's so, a whole other here's thing. a good and the bad. I think <laughs> Harry Hope uh, Fletcher's performance really does kind of. Yeah, carry it'll that be show. interesting have, to see how it plays on Broadway. It will be interesting to see how it plays without her. Yeah, <laughs> is my illiterate uh, thought. Also, like, I feel like his musicals like hit, really hit or miss out here, especially in the past. Yeah, decade yeah, or uh, two since post Phantom, really. Think about it. Yeah, 
Like sometimes they do really well, and sometimes a lot of times they're just meant to stay on the West End almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean West End shows and Broadway shows. Oh, I are guess very School of Rock things. was the last big. Yeah, thing he had a, that went went pretty well for him. So well, that's because School of Rock is a big film, not because he wrote a good musical. <laughs> All right, Christy, what's your okay, about this last time I my you know my number five? Um, you know, mostly because I think people are a bit too hard on it sometimes as cats. <laughs> Because it is what it is. It's, you know, and I get it. It's a dumb show where people dress up as cats and, you know, sing in or, you know, sing songs about themselves and want to die. And, but it is what it is. It's just, you know, harmless fluff. I mean, Jillian Lynn's original choreography no was amazing. Um, I mean, you know, it's a genius tourist musical it is, in so many it is, ways it's... because you don't have to know anything about musicals. You don't have to speak English to follow Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You just go You go with your family in Times Square. You go, that show's been running for a long time and has the song Barbara Streisand sang. Let's go see it. Yeah. And then we've checked a thing off of our tourism list. It's genius. You know, yeah, it's... Cats in a Chorus Line are basically the same show. <laughs> kind people of, people singing yes. about themselves and wishing they were dead. <laughs> it's like that Forbidden Broadway parody where they do people people auditioning for cats uh-huh. but they're doing it like a, co- a chorus okay, line yeah, it's yeah. so funny it's like da 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 again scratch lick lick per kick scratch <laughs> yeah and, yeah. Now, and you know the combo I away from the litter box some of the some of the songs are genuine bangers like rum tum yeah. tugger mm-hmm. i mean mm-hmm. memory is like one of one of the classic ballads of all time um so yeah it's you know it you know it's i loved it a lot more than I, when i was a kid than i do now but it's just cats. It's harmless. It's yeah. silly. The movie was ridiculous in many ways and dumb, but it's a good bad movie watch. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. great, Emily. What about yours? All right. So my my number five is a little cheeky. Um, <laughs> my <laughs> number five <clears throat> is Love Never Dies, and <clears throat> not because it's good. Because it's not. It's no. very much not. But I can honestly say it's probably the most fun I've had watching an Andrew Lloyd Webber <laughs> musical. Like that is fair. Like I was, I, I saw it in, I saw it, I went and saw it because I wanted to do a video about it, a review of it. So I saw the tour. Mm-hmm. That shit's never coming to Broadway. It's just been on tour forever. Yeah. And um, so I saw it, and it, yeah, it was just about um, the dumbest thing. <laughs> it's fan fiction, the musical. Oh it's yes, absolutely. And that's you know. Uh, that's the problem. Some people have suggested this, and I think there's possible merit to it. If you know, if you if he hadn't tried to tie it into Phantom, it might have worked. I mean, if you if you just adapted the Great Gatsby, yeah, honestly, honestly if you <laughs> yeah. if you if this were just you know this melodramatic love triangle romance set against you know turn of the century Coney Island, you know they could have done it, and I might have actually liked it because you know I'm I'm you know as we'll get into I'm all about you know romance with you know pretty aesthetic you know dramatic romance with pretty aesthetics. But, yeah. you know, because you bring that in and you make it, you know, his, you know, phantom angst fic, it's... Yeah, it, and, it like, kind of just bunch of retconning problems. everything about the Absolutely. original show. And, and, yeah, and you got to look at this from a fandom perspective. Um, if you ever get into phantom fan fiction, the two things you will see more than anything else, Christine has the phantom's child, Ral turns out to be an asshole. All, you know, that is, like, the two most overdrawn yeah. tropes in phantom fanfic ever. So, you know, if you're coming... And guess sexy. what's in Love Never Dies. Yeah. Like so, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you got the peop- you got people like me who are coming into looking at this and going, what, again? Come on. <laughs> I wrote that when I was 15. Try harder. It's so funny because, like, Broadway in the 80s, I feel like that's, like, where we get the kickoff of, like, where you see Broadway now. This, like... Mm-hmm fandom of teenagers right who just yes, want all yes. the merch and want to write all the stories about it and um who would have thought that you know your musical about the fandom of the opera would inspire such a huge fandom right um where it's like 20 30 years later and he's like maybe i should do a sequel musical and make that sweet sweet money and uh yeah <laughs> I guess he did. The thing is, he was doing it, like, even right after Phantom. Like, he was writing it in the 90s, even. Yeah, oh, yeah. So and, there you go. Yeah, it had been a long people, development Yeah, there's, thing. you know, there, there's a conspiracy theory that he has issues with, you know, how his uh, marriage with Sarah Brightman fell out, <laughs> and there it's, that he's, <laughs> that's getting in there. Oh, it's like, oh, Christine doesn't want me, I'll just kill her off in the next one. Yeah, spoilers, spoilers. <laughs> 
I remember yeah. like laughing when that happened. It was yeah. so funny. I was like, yeah. I can't believe that they just freaking killed her. Yeah. Glorious. Ten out of ten. Yeah. All right. All right. Anyway, let's move on. Yeah. To number four. Yes. And I am certain my number four probably won't be on either of yours list because it's kind of a cheat. <laughs> Um, but it is easily the album of his I listen to the most, probably the one I just turn on while I'm working, and it is Requiem. Yeah. It is his wonderful. I remember Requiem. Re- yeah, it's so good. Yeah. I love this yeah, one. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a genuinely good choral piece. Um, you know, I love the PAA Sue, and it's got some fantastic mm. stuff in there. So, mm-hmm. and every cover of the PAA Sue, um, incredible. I I will just turn this on if I just have so like two hours of work to do, and it'll just be great background music. Mm-hmm. And just knowing how much work he put into it, if he, anyone's read his book on Maslow, that was like, I needed to work on this. This was like my, my big project, the one thing that I was going to define me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, that one? Yeah. <laughs> all right. But that's all I got to say. It's a great thing. Mm-hmm. Like, And I, I didn't want to have my list without it. All right, Christy, what's your okay, number four? Okay, my number four is Sunset Boulevard. I think, you know, it gets, uh, I think it, ha- it yeah, it, it, ca- a lot, a lot of it is the strength of the source material, um, yes. especially the strength of the character of Norma Desmond, um, you know, one of those fantastic leading lady parts. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, everybody remembers like, you know, the, the over, the over the top set with the floating mansion and all the leading lady drama with Patty and, um, <laughs> God, who was the other one? Glenn, Glenn Close. Yeah. Glenn, Close. <laughs> Glenn Close. And there was another one where that got fired. Betty I forget Buckley? who. And... Was... I was just reading about this in the yeah. Michael Riedel's book about ni- the nineties on Broadway. Yeah. But um, yeah, that was yeah, some drama. It's got some, <laughs> it's got some fantastic solo work in it. I mean, with one look and if, as if everything, as if we never said goodbye, those are great, um, you know, power, ba- power ballad solos. So yeah. Yeah. All right. I, I can't disagree. Um, it's also on my list, um, but we'll get to that later. Um, <laughs> Emily, what's your number four? My number four uh, is Phantom of the Opera. Um, I feel like you just can't you can't have a list without Phantom on there, really. Um, it's uh, uh, yeah, it's just a good ju- it's just a good show. I think mm-hmm. it's like probably I, I've never been in the fandom for right. Phantom. <laughs> um, I've always just been like, yeah. That's a good show. I th- yeah, um, I think it, it's one of those lightning in the bottle things because, um, you mm-hmm. know, I I like the score. I like the score, obviously, but you got to combine in, you know, Hal Prince's direction, um, mm-hmm. obviously, uh, the you know the artistic direction, f- sets and costumes by Maria Bjornsson, and then you know the lighting and everything else, and it just kind of all came together just right. Yeah. It's a, and uh, yeah, it's, some of the only soprano roles left on Broadway. Oh my God, so. yes, yes. And I think it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what happens, you know, when that gets a little more into, you know, regional play and you try, you see people trying, you know, new things away from that aesthetic to see how well it holds up from yeah, that or what really they, do, they can we, figure we out. We don't out really at. do Phantom regionally in community theater, Yeah, not do we? yet. Is it not available? It must not be available. It must not be available. I mean, high schools are doing it. I think it just it. recently got available, but then... Yeah, and there's like happens. some, and there's like, you know, some stuff over in Europe. There's some non, uh, you know, non-replica productions. Mm. Um, uh, and, you know, some of it's like, oh, that's some interest, that's an interesting way of doing that. And then some of it's like, oh, okay. it'd be It'd be interesting to see you just new things being tried absolutely with it, yes. yes in general i want to do a larue accurate deformity with it come on <laughs> well, yeah yes, and like but does it thing, hold you know, up you get without your nose the like this and then how are you gonna sing music of the night it's gonna come out weird i seem <laughs> i seem to recall yeah i seem to recall you know michael crawford said that they did try you know some a little a little bit of the cheney-esque makeup with that and he said it sounded like the godfather when he tried to sing so <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but yeah overall good show I like I like it as much as I can like a, a an Angela Weber musical in my number four. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, that's fair. All right, my number three is Sunset Boulevard. Once again, very good source material, very effective performance. It's a worse version of Passion. Come on, <laughs> I do not like it. Definitely, I will say that there are some actual certified bops in this. Mm-hmm. Um, the the title song Sunset Boulevard. It's a song that I love, but also sounds like every version of it. It sounds like man, they aren't singing that right. <laughs> Just because the time signature yeah. is just so wack. Yeah. Um, 
Is there anything else? No, that's it. Let's move on. All right. <laughs> What's your number three? All right. So uh, my number three is Evita. So again, one of, you know. Ooh, so low. <laughs> well, um, you know, got it's, you know, it's got, you know, again, one of the few great, um, you know, leading lady roles that Lloyd Webber wrote. Um, it's, you know, a fantastic story. It's when he was working with Tim Rice and I think was trying to be a little more experimental and, you know, a little more, you know, daring before he kind of you know got into the 80s and you know kind of his showman and romantic aspects took over mm -hmm. so yeah it does some interesting things with it you know i kind of you know you kind of have the che guevara xp as the narrator and um you know just looking at dis different aspects of a woman that you know honestly before you know mm -hmm. he did that you know people you know in england and america probably didn't know a whole lot about so I mean, there's a lot to say about yeah. that. And, that shows. Yeah, so and good. it also made it also made probably you know the best adaptation of a Lloyd Webber musical on film that we have to date. So yeah, I, yep, that's how that's I got fair. into Evita when I was a kid. I mm -hmm. didn't really know it, and then I saw the movie, and I got I got really obsessed with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, all right, what about you, Emily? Oh, the, okay. So my number three is the Dark Horse, um, uh, a la your Requiem. Um, my number three is uh, Tell Me on a Sunday. Ah, yes. Because I think that's fantastic, probably the most fantastic minimalist. Fantastic solos in this, in that one. It's the most minimalist that Andrew Lloyd Webber, I think, has ever gone. Mm -hmm. um, one person show. Um, you know, Bernadette Peters doing her bad mm -hmm. British accent. <laughs> you know, I, I'm yeah. a sucker for unexpected song. That's like, a great come one. On. The title song I, is magnificent. Yeah, I, I like it a lot. I think it would be a fun role and a fun show to do someday. Um, mm -hmm. It's not in a, it's in kind of like a good range, vocal range. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I like Tell Me on a Sunday. I, I think it's often overrated uh not overrated uh underrated, overrated. yeah overlooked. overlooked there you it go is. there you go yeah often overlooked yeah 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 i i love that show i love that album more than i love the show yeah itself. i think mm -hmm. i do too yeah um yeah. Right. a lot of his Back shows work better as albums <laughs> yeah 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 speaking of which uh my number two is avita i <laughs> flip and love avita mm -hmm. avita's so good everything that christy said um i agree wholeheartedly um Every Evita I've ever seen, like, live has always been, like, a tour de force for that specific actress. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I, I can revisit this album and this movie and this show anytime, and I just mm -hmm. always enjoy it. And I know it's got some iffy things um, <laughs> about, like, factual accuracies and yeah. all that, and people have brought up those issues. But you know what? No one points out the factual accuracies in Hamilton, and if they do, they're kind of a buzzkill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kind of missing the point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where this one is just like, I yeah, and it was a big Tim Rice project, same as Superstar. Mm -hmm. Like those were big. Tim Rice is pushing that, and Andrew Lloyd Webber's like, oh, <laughs> <bye."> nine. Because <laughs> Tim Rice, um, we'll talk about that one later. Um, well, actually, yeah, Tim Rice really liked this idea. He was watching all these documentaries, and Andrew Lloyd Webber's like, eh, it's kind of boring, wouldn't you say? <laughs> okay, I'll do it, mm -hmm. but I'll just write um, all the best songs ever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Number two, Chris. Uh, my number two is going off on that Jesus Christ Superstar. Um, you know, again, it's a great album. I love the original album. Um, it's fantastic. It's, you know, I, it's got some fantastic instrumental stuff in there. I honestly think Andrew Lloyd Webber missed his calling mm -hmm. as a, um, as a film composer. He could have been like the John Williams of Britain. <laughs> just because of the way he writes pastiche and you know light mood you know those hooks and those themes so well but yeah i love the overture i love the epilogue john 19 for i can never remember like the chapter verse but it's a beautiful epilogue yeah and uh i just love how you know they took you know jesus you know they take the you know the passion story the holy week story and they take all these, you know, perspectives of who Jesus is. Is he going to be like this great liberator? Is he, you know, this actual son of God? Is he somebody who just believed his own press too much? Is he like this sad, misguided lunatic? You see all of these ideas of who he's of who he is, and then at the end, you know, Judas asks, "Who are you?" and leaves that question hanging. I think that's a really fantastic way to to end that. So. <laughs> Yeah, really good. Um, I do love the uh, 70s movie with Ted Neely and Carl Anderson. Um, you know, some of the recent, some of the more recent pro shots, it's kind of meh. I kind of like the John Legend one. The just John Legend one was like... a lot better than I thought it would be because, yeah, 
they had some good stuff Embracing going on. Embracing what the show um, was supposed yeah. to be. Yeah, they yeah. have uh, Dixon as <laughs> Judas was fantastic. Norm Lewis as Caiaphas. Mm. Yes. <laughs> A little too sexy for me. <laughs> um, uh, Easter Sunday. I cannot. I cannot be hanging out with my family. I cannot be horny ways. for like the the Sanhedrin. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. What's your number two, Emily? Uh, <clears throat> my number two is the same as Christie's. It's Jesus Christ Superstar. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what else I can add. Uh, it's just a bitchin' rock score. Um, I don't like I Don't Know How to Love Him. I could go the rest of my life without hearing that song again, but the yeah. rest of the score, I think, is pretty great. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, you hear those, like, riffs on the guitar, that dang, 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 I love that. It's so uh, thrilling, um, mm-hmm. and uh, I like how a little sacrilegious it is. Yeah, um, yeah it really, uh, it, pissed off, it pissed off the evangelical off conservatives yeah, back yeah. in the day, and um, probably still does. Mm. Yeah, that was my brother's um, senior year musical, Ooh. and he Ooh. he played King Herod. Ah, um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, and, that's one of those and, great parts where you go in, you have like the kick-ass showstopper number, and then you chill for the rest of the show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, but the, I remember because I I went I saw it, um, but I remember they did that thing that a lot of high school versions of Jesus Christ Superstar do, which is they made the priests. Uh, girls because there's like no girl person there's, in that like, show no except for mary parts, magdalene yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. My, that's my big problem uh, i think my big problem with jesus christ superstar is it buys into the whole mary magdalene is a prostitute thing that you know i think yeah. even back then they you know religious authorities were like no come on guys let's not be gross <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, and there's yeah. that. Uh, but you know, on the plus side, you know, I think it has one of the better, you know, songs for a film adaptation. In could we start again, please? I love that piece. Yes. Yeah, I always mix that song up with with, with that song they added into th- that song in School of Rock that the kids sing. <laughs> <laughs> What is that song mm. called? It. I always want to sing. Could we start again, please? But I know it's not that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway, Jesus Christ Superstar, bitchin' shit. Yeah. Very good. Uh, my number one is Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> Very good show. <laughs> Every album of this fucking slaps. Um, there's not a single thing I would change about it. I love the movie. Even like the not so great adaptations, I still find something to love. And I know that we were bringing up that it needs more female roles. Hell yeah, they just released um, last year an all female version of Superstar mm-hmm. with folks like Cynthia Erivo. Yes, that's um, right. It's so good. I would love so yeah. flipping good. Just you know, uh, one of the roles you know, if I could you know pick my dream role, I would play pilot in that because I think oh, it's y- just <laughs> yeah, it just play pilot you know as you know kind of the, you know the you know. You know, the political, you know, political lady, um, you know, because kind of caught between, you know, what she knows is right and what's going to be, you know, politically advantageous. And that little Russian ice skater boy at the Olympics wants to play pilot, too, apparently. <laughs> He's trying to escape with the goddamn yeah. lashes. Deep cut. Yeah, Deep cut. but it's yeah, so and <laughs> then uh, Pilot <laughs> Stream, <laughs> I love that, you know, it's a great <clears throat> solo. And the trial is so good that it's basically the entire overture yeah (laughs) yeah like that entire trial scene and also has my one of my favorite pieces ever written by Andrew Lloyd Webber which is the crucifixion he has never done anything that that experimental before since he's he's actually doing some weird stuff with that I mean it's insane and dissonant and you've got the laughing and it's god it's amazing (laughs) proper nightmare scenario Mm -hmm. um Cannot say enough good things about this. You peaked. You peaked with your first <laughs> one, Andy. His seventies works are definitely my yeah. favorites. <laughs> um, all right, Christy. I think I know I what mean, your number one is. I think I know too. To ask me. It's Phantom of the Opera because it's me. I'm, you know, a huge nerd for the Beauty and the Beast stories. I mean, that's you know, basically my teenage years. You know, was all about that. And, you know, it's, I am just, I just love, you know, people, you know, I just love, you know, people having big dramatic issues um, in pretty sets and costumes. I mean, it's kind of why I'm watching Gilded Age right now. It's melodramatic. (laughs) It's, you know, over the top, but everybody looks fantastic and I'm just enjoying it so much. So, yeah. Not a bad one. Yeah. And it's, Mm -hmm. yeah. (laughs) Uh, Like I said, it all comes together um, when you see it and when you have when you have a strong cast that's actually able to, you know, kind of 
bring, you know, break, flesh out the book a little more than it is on the paper and make the characters live, it works. Mm-hmm. So it did not make my top five. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> Emily, what's your number one? Uh, my number one is Evita, hands mm-hmm. down. Um, I uh, <laughs> my senior year musical was Evita, and uh, I'll never I'll, I'll never get over this, and I'll never ever stop saying that high schoolers should not do Evita. It was a horrible senior <laughs> year musical. It, well, it, it's a freaking tough role, among other things. Um, there's no parts. Oh, uh, no. It's, if Patty Lapone went bonkers playing Evita how mm-hmm. do you think a troubled high schooler did she went bonkers. yeah I mean that's basic um, that's basically it, where they started you know putting in the alternates like they do with Christine um nowadays I so. mean there's no reason why her character couldn't just be played by uh, different actors or three different actors yeah. or two mm-hmm. different actors there's no reason but that's a whole other tangent it's a very bad high school musical the director did it for his ego <laughs> um he's everything I uh yeah Locks uh, Gary Sorensen. You all know who he is. He's a very bad uh, director. Anyway, <laughs> um, very bad performing arts educator. But I digress. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but because that was my senior year musical, I got to really learn the score um, and the show. And mm-hmm. it's just, it's a masterpiece. I never, I, I, I don't think I, it's possible for me to listen to Evita and not get chills after that mm-hmm. announcement that she's dead. And then, oh, boom, yeah. boom, 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 yeah. boom. And we all had to freeze and be crying in the yeah. in the in the movie theater. Um, yeah, it, it's it's such a, an amazing score. Um, yeah, I don't like in that new revival though how they slowed down and the money kept rolling in. I didn't like that. I, um, how can you slow that down? Yeah. I mean, I kind of it's think the you revival need with Ricky Martin. I, it's yeah. like rolling, 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 ro- and I'm like, no, you don't need that. That's kind of like something? you know the that's kind of like you know how the 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 motor going, the wheels of the yeah. you know the charity yeah. scam going. I mean, you need to get. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. It was a choice I didn't like. But I, mean, I will sometimes say... Sometimes if you take a Mandy Patinkin thing and then you give it to someone else, <laughs> they, they just sound right? like... <laughs> but, like, I think, you know, um, this is why a lot of, like, I'll give a pass to, say, the Sweeney Todd film, because the Evita film is obviously not as good as the stage musical, but when I was a kid and only learning about musicals, mm-hmm. you know, and kind of expanding my knowledge about them, when I saw Evita, that sent me on, like a spiral to learn about the show and to learn right. about Andrew Lloyd Webber musicals more. Uh-huh. And so sometimes those gateway movies, you know, even though they're not like super great, like yeah, yeah. I, I still like the yeah, movie. The I, I Phantom thought it was is kind of the same way for a lot of people, you know, oh. it's, I, you know, I look at it and it's like, what the heck are you doing? But I know the, yeah. pe- you know, the people who came to it through that were like, yeah, I know it's got problems, but this is my first experience with the show and I love it. So it's, yeah, yeah I get, I get that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I I love Evita number one. I don't think he's ever, I don't think he's ever topped it, baby. (laughs) Evita two, find Evita's body. Evita two, otherwise known as (laughs) Diana the Musical. (laughs) Rossi's came down way too hard on Diana. I'm sorry. Again, it's harmless fun. I love Diana. Don't know. Diana. I feel like I like Diana what for what it became rather than what it is because yes, that, that Netflix pro shot is not what that show became. <laughs> like from yeah. what I hear, that Netflix pro shot is a very tame, much more seriously taken version. And then the last final night of Diana, that was like the room. Oh, I love it though. But my kindergarten um, class, I didn't get to say goodbye. That's my favorite line. <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> anyway, Jess. <laughs> On that note, um, I think we kind of summed it all up. Yeah. Um, that's such a good, good, good time. That was a lot oh, of fun. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Why don't you promote your guys' stuff so they can find you and tell you what their favorite Andrew Lloyd Webber musicals are. Christy, you're on first. All right. Um, I am at Musical Hell on YouTube, uh, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, Redbubble, Teespring, um, I have done reviews of like film versions of Phantom and Love Never Dies and Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat and Cats. So, yeah, I've got a, I've 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 raked uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber over the coals a few times. So, <laughs> all right, or <Our> Emily, <laughs> whoever you people, whoever are. we are, I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, my my show is Stealing Focus. You can find that on YouTube. Uh, we also have a Stealing Focus Patreon. And you can find me at Emily A.B. Clark. It looks like Emily A.B.C. Lark <laughs> on all the socials, uh, Twitter, TikTok, Insta, all that stuff. 
Um, and yeah, I have a, quite a few videos on Andrew Lloyd Webber <laughs> projects as well. It's fish in a barrel, baby. Mm-hmm. And you know me, I'm on Musicals of Cheese. I'm on Twitter at Jesse D. McNally. It looks like McAnally. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I also made a really long and self-indulgent video about Andrew Lloyd Webber's film adaptations. That, that, it's that very also good. On the internet. And I did a cameo <laughs> in it. Oh, yes, yeah. you both did. I oh, was wait. Madonna. Yeah, you both did. Yeah, I was doing my best Andrew Lloyd Webber, you know, being as stuffy and stuttery as yeah. possible. <laughs> I do love that video. I don't think I ever want to do it. <laughs> I think that's my, that's the thing. I'm like, that was a lot of work. How do, how do you guys do it so often? I don't do well, it. Well, you see, I don't actually, I don't actually appear on camera in my videos. I just record and then I cut everything together. So yeah, I had costumes and like <laughs> props and technical pyrotechnics. I had confetti all over. <laughs> And for what? For what? For what? <laughs> exactly. Um, all right, guys. We'll see you next time. Thank you. On the Dear Have Friends a good day. Podcast. Bye. 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 Dear friends, spill your woes to your musical family. Dear friends, they will take your questions and turn them into nuggets of wisdom. And anecdotes in an otherwise cynical world